Today we're going to cover the reasons why your saw is cutting in curves. I'm going to go over each and every cause, how to rectify it so that by the end of the video you know exactly what to do and how to repair your saw at home. First and least obvious cause as to why your saw might not be cutting straight actually has nothing to do with the saw, bar or chain at all. It can be to do with the wood that you're cutting. If you're cutting particularly knotty pieces of wood, you'll find that it will want to curve around those knots or the knot will actually deviate that chain off of its course. If that's the case, all you can do is really try and avoid the knots, but it's no big deal. It's nothing you actually have to change with the bar and chain itself. You may very well find that it's easier for you to sharpen one side of the chain rather than the other, and thus pulling to that side. Slightly less obvious though, is if you damage the cutters on one side, or they're slightly dull, of course therefore it will pull to the sharper side as well. There are multiple angles that we need to take into account and maintain consistency in from left to right cutter and throughout the whole loop of chain itself. The first angle is called the file angle. This is generally 30 degrees, but it can be more or less depending on the species of the wood that you're cutting and also the type of cut you're doing. The next angle to consider is your top plate angle. This is generally 60 degrees, but if you go into harder woods, you may find you want to go up to 70 or even 80 degrees for the longevity and robustness of that tooth. Having that top plate angle too acute is just going to end up causing you damaged and dull teeth very, very quickly. This is determined by the height in which you hold that file. And if you're new to filing, I do recommend a guide because it's going to maintain that consistency without any effort on your behalf. The guides generally rest on the tooth and the depth gauge sitting in front of it, and you'll find that it will make the process much, much easier, especially if you're just starting out. And then lastly, our side plate angle. Typically, this is shown from the outside of the tooth in most literature, but it's actually easier to see what you're filing and where you're filing from the inside of the tooth. These three angles work together, and it does depend on the species you're cutting, the type of wood you're cutting, and the type of cut that you're doing to ensure that you get the best result and the most longevity out of that tooth. I've actually got a video, I'll link that in the top right hand corner now. You can click on that and come back to it a bit later. It just goes over the whole process on how to file a chainsaw chain. Then we have the length of the tooth and the depth gauge that sits in front of it. Ideally, we keep the length of the tooth the same across the board, especially if we're using the file guides that typically come in most filing kits. They take an average of three or four teeth before the one you're working on to set that depth gauge itself. If your teeth are different lengths, it can put that depth gauge out by miles. Therefore, it really is important to maintain the consistency and length of cutter and depth gauge across the board. However, there is an alternative and better option, and that's called a progressive depth gauge guide. This gauge doesn't use the three or four teeth prior. It actually sits directly in front of the tooth that you're working on and also on the depth gauge itself, and it will be progressive depending on the tooth. Therefore, you can have teeth of different lengths. Although it might not be ideal, it will certainly cut nice and true. I'll put links in the description for those progressive depth gauge guides, and there are a number of manufacturers that actually make them, still Husqvarna, and there are independent people that have come up with their own designs. And last but not least, we move on to the bar itself. There are two main problems that occur with the bar over time. Firstly, the rail height from left to right can vary, and that can set the chain to one side. And secondly, the bar rails can actually splay and separate, and again, that affects the gauge and the clearance between the drive link and the guide bar itself. The two fixes for this are firstly to pull those rails together, and we do that with a guide bar closing tool. I'll put again links in the description for this. And then secondly, once those rails are pulled together, you then dress the top of that bar with another guide that I'm going to link into the description as well. All of these tools are very, very affordable, and it's much better to do little and often and keep on top of servicing the bar and chain to ensure that you don't run into any issues when you're out and about and just wanting to get the job done. Ideally, when you're closing those rails, you'll go by feeler gauges to set the correct clearance between the left and right rails. However, you can simply slide that chain in and make sure that it's not binding anywhere. If it does bind in certain spots, place a wide screwdriver in there and gently tap it with a hammer to bring that back out so that the chain and the drive links run through nice and smoothly. 
If we place the guide bar up on its rails, ideally it should be able to sit nice and true. It's an easy test to see whether they are even from left to right if it does rock and fall over to one side. You can use a 90 degree angle, you can hold it up to the light and see quite clearly, but I tend to find that simply resting the bar onto a table, if it sits upright, sits nice and true, then they generally are very good to go. And if you're buying a second hand saw, I've got this video here, which covers in great detail everything that you should check before you part with your cash. There are a lot of aftermarket parts that are inferior to the original engine manufacturer, and you may end up buying something that really is valueless. So have a quick watch. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope it saves you a lot of money. And I also hope that this video today has helped you out too. Until next time, I'll catch you soon.